and welcome to the Fancy News Show from The Bottled Imp. My name is Ken Boyter and this is your weekly fix of Fancy News. On this week's show, another expansion is announced for the Descent game. Get your first peek at the Assassin's Creed film. And a Python is set to star in the ill-fated Don Coyote film. But first, the winners of the Nebula Awards for 2015 have been announced. And the Nebula Awards are voted by active members of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America. And they have over 1,500 members. Among them, there's lots of lead writers in, the, in those genres. There are six categories that people vote on including the best novel. And this year, that was won by Naomi Novik for her novel, Uprooted. So congratulations to her and to all the other winners. If you'd like a full list, then you can go to the, their website, which is sfwa.org. Fancy Flight have announced a new Descent expansion. The Chains That Rust sees the continuation of your adventures through the Mistlands. Now, this expansion does add an entirely new standalone single campaign that you can obviously play on its own, or you can play it as a sequel to the, uh, what's it called, the Mists of Bill Hall expansion. Plus, there are new Tainted cards and a new Overlord class. Plus, there are eight plastic monster figures for his armies. And for the first time, you can go beyond your hero's traditional class decks, because obviously when you get your uh, character, you can choose which class you want to be. But this time, you can cross those classes. You can do a hybrid of classes, which sounds very, very exciting. Now, I've only played the campaign once. I played the introduction campaign, and I really, really loved it. So I'm excited to carry on playing and play the actual campaign. So all these new expansions, there's quite a few now, I believe. So it'll be interesting to see how they play. And it's due out towards the end of the year, and you can find out further details from fancyflightgames.com. We will be putting all the descriptions in, all the links, I should say, in the descriptions of our episode. So you can catch a look at the first trailer for the Assassin's Creed film. 20th Century Fox have released a teaser trailer, uh, which the film is obviously based on the Assassin's Creed video games. For those of you that haven't played the video games, the storyline follows Callum Lynch, who is sub subjected to revolutionary technology that can unlock genetic memories. More specifically, they actually unlock one memory of his ancestors, and uh, he is called, if that's how you pronounce his name, Angular. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And it takes, it transports everybody back to the 15th century Spain. So most of the video game is actually back in Spain in the 15th century. The film stars Michael Fassbender, and it is directed by Justin Ker Kurzel. I think that's how you pronounce it. And from what I can see from the trailer, it just looks stupendous. It looks amazing. Visually, it looks gorgeous. Obviously, there's going to be some really brilliant set pieces. I'm hoping the storyline is good. If they've stuck to the video games, the storyline is very, very strong. And you can find the trailer from the official site, which is foxmovies.com. It's due out in December of this year. Terry Gillum and Michael Paling are teeling, teaming up once again. Hurrah, that's good news. The Monty Python boys are reuniting for the film The Man Who Killed Don Coyote, which, and all of that was reported at the Cannes Film Festival recently. Paling will play the title role of Don Coyote, and also the star of Star Wars The Force Awakens, Adam Driver, will be playing Toby. Exciting combination there. The film is based on the 17th century novel by Miguel de... de oh, these names. Cravent, Cravents? Yeah, let's go with that, shall we? Now, the story follows the adventures of Mr. Alonso, do, don, um, Alonso Coyote, who is a Spanish nobleman, and he has read so many heroic adventures that he kind of loses his sanity and he feels that he must fulfill these heroic adventures. So he sets off to do just that. And he changes his name to a more heroic Don Coyote. And he calls himself Don Coyote de la Mancha. Now, Gilliam has tried to get this film running for years, but he's just been plagued by problems. There was a documentary way back in 2002 that documented all of this called Lost in La Mancha. 
And the film is actually expected to be released in 2017, so fingers crossed, because it's not always gone to plan before. Studio Gilbelli, again, I'm sorry with the names, are bringing their films to the big screen all over the UK again. Yes, you can see your favourite Japanese anime films at the cinema. It starts right now and it runs to the 28th of July and there'll be screenings in various different places such as London, Cambridge, Oxford, Birmingham, Birmingham Liverpool, Belfast and Edinburgh. And the films include Grave of the Fireflies, Princess Monique, Spirited Away and the recently bottled imp reviewed film Howl's Moving Castle. There are loads more films that you can check out as well so you can get a full list of the films and where they're playing and what times they're playing at their website which is, forgive me for the pronunciation, studiogilibilyforever.com. We will be putting the links in the description of this episode, you'll be glad to know. And it's just over two weeks now until Warcraft The Beginning is unleashed. It's directed by Duncan Jones and it stars Travis Frimmel. <laughs> I'm really sorry. And the film is set in all of the World of Warcraft universe. For those of you that don't know, the World of Warcraft is a massively popular video online multiplayer role playing uh, game. And it uh, was started way back in 2004 by Blizzard Entertainment. And that was in turn based on the Warcraft universe, which was first introduced back in 1994 with Warcraft Orcs and Humans. Now, what they're doing with the film is basically going back to, it's kind of like an origin story, because it, encounters, it traces back the encounters of the Orcs and the Humans when they first met. The Orcs are facing extinction from a, a, a greater threat, whereas the Humans are actually facing destruction from the Orcs. It's been in development since 2006, so obviously there's been a lot of script changes and a lot of development there. So let's hope that it you know, comes to fruition, because I've looked at the trailer and the trailer does look really, really good. You can see the trailer at warcraftmovie.co.uk. The film is released on the 30th of May in the UK and in the US of A it's the 10th of June. Harry Potter Battle is a cooperative deck building game from USAopoly. Hogwarts Castle is under threat from the forces of evil and it's up to you and three other students to defeat the villains to keep the school safe. So players take on the role of Harry, Ron, Hermione or Neville and they each have their own personal deck and abilities and you obviously have to uh, keep the school safe by getting resources. There's not much else to report about that because they've just released that basic description of the game. It is due out for release on, where is it, the end of September, they've said this year. Neil Edwards will be signing a Assassin's Creed Volume 1 Trial by Fire at the Forbidden Planet Megastore in London and this is a, an exclusive Forbidden Planet edition that he'll be signing. This edition contains the first five issues of the Assassin's Creed comic which is obviously based on the very popular video game. The graphic novel follows a fresh inductee into the modern day Assassin's Brotherhood as they uncover a conspiracy in their DNA that stretches back hundreds of years. Neil, Edmund, Neil, Edmund? Neil Edwards has worked on numerous titles for the Marvel and DC universes, including Fantastic Four, Dark Avengers and Justice League United. And if this is for you, then as I say, you can check out the London Megastore Forbidden Planet in Shaftesbury Avenue on Wednesday the 25th of May from 6pm till 7 It's only one hour. Kickstarter news. Dark Soul, this is an amazing story. Dark Soul from Steamforge Game has had one of the highest grossing campaigns to date and I just want to quickly mention this because it is quite staggering they have raised <laughs> over three and a half million pounds that's over five million dollars that is extraordinary for a board game just amazing they were originally asking for fifty thousand uh, pounds and they have locked over seven uh, stretch goals so obviously they, the more money they raised the more of these stretch goals they were adding and unlocking so congratulations to Steamforge Games and all of those people that have backed the campaign. Darkest Night taken edition from Victory Point Games is designed by Jeremy Lennart and it's a fully cooperative board game for up to five players 
and it's set in the kingdom that is ruled by a necromancer and each player is taking on a role of a hero and basically you are searching for various relics throughout the board and the necromancer is trying to hunt you down. He, he can't, his vision isn't that good, so you go around unseen, so that's quite a good mechanism. But then you, there are certain mechanisms that you can attract his attention, then you have to fight him off. He has to get to the monastery to destroy the only hope that every player has. Everybody has this monastery, which is a really safe haven for the land. And um, as I say, yeah, it's got uh, the artwork. Sorry, the artwork looks amazing. It does look really stunning. The board looks gorgeous, which I'm, I'm a sucker for lovely looking artwork. So uh, I'm very tempted by this one. And it, it's a second edition. So there must have been a first edition out there. I'm not sure because I've not heard of this game before. And I would imagine they've done vast improvements and added lots of new things. There is also an add-on where you can have 30 unique miniatures too. And Victory Point Games have been going since 2007, so they do have a bit of a track record. It's already funded and it finishes on the 11th of June. The Imaginarium Book 1, Eva Story, is the first book in a trilogy of steampunk art by uh, Gary Nichols. And Book 1 is a steampunk Dickensian themed story about a woman's journey from ruination to salvation. And all the series is told through a series of fine art photographic images. The book has a huge production with 36 characters, 36 actors that have dressed up in steampunk clothes and 65 extras. So There's a lot of um, people that is photographed there. They are all apparently genuine steampunk fans, you know, the people that go to conventions and dress up. So a lot of them will be using their own costumes. And it apparently it's taken four years to put this together. There's over 150 images. And they, there are props that are, you know, originally designed and created by Peter Walton. So, I mean, the book looks absolutely stunning. There's lots of images on the campaign that you can look at. And there is also a video showing you behind the scenes of how he actually creates the images. There are various editions that are planned, but the first standard edition is £79. It finishes on the 10th of June. And Jenna Nortz if that's how you pronounce it. The complete season one collection is six novellas all in one collection by Michael R. Underwood. And the general premise of this is that there are different universes that are all parallel and they're each like a genre of literature. So you'll have a fantasy universe, you'll have a sci-fi universe, you'll have a horror, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And what happens is in each of these universes, stories, if they start to break down, then they need fixing. And that's when you send in the genonauts and they go in and try to fix these stories. If they can't fix them, then that seems to leak into our universe. So there's, you know, if it's fantasy, then you're going to get um, xenophobia rises and cultural rifts widen. So whichever universe breaks down has a direct correlation in our own universe. So I think that's a really interesting uh, concept. It's already funded and it finishes on the 8th of June. Bottled Imp News. The UK Games Expo is nigh. Just a quick reminder that basically we will, the Bottled Imp, we will have a stand at the UK Games Expo which runs from the 3rd to the 5th of June in Birmingham at the NEC Centre. We are on stand G17, so come and say hello. I will have my new book, which is a children's illustrated fancy book. Hopefully, it's at the printers now, so hopefully we'll get it back in time. And we'll, I'll be selling that. Plus, we'll have Julian, who is the co-creator of The Bottled Imp, and the producer and the film. He's good with the cameras, he does all the filming and the editing. So you can say hello to him, you can talk to him about filmmaking if you like. Plus, we will be having Rich Nan, who is our caricaturist. He does the Little Bottled Imp illustrations. Plus, he illustrated my book. So you can get your caricature done from him as well. And tonight, I'm off to see Frankenstein. Yes, the uh, Royal Opera House are, have been performing their Frankenstein. And I've got a friend who's very into uh, opera. And I like Frankenstein. So we thought, let's go together. Because the cinemas around the country are showing it tonight. So I'll report back what I think of it. And remember, we do have our own website, www.thebottledimp.com. Plus, we're on Twitter and Facebook. And you can interact us with us there. We do put, put uh, photos up there of gaming sessions and any events that we go to. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, fellow imps, thanks for watching. That's all we have time for. Keep it unreal, especially the news.